Chord melody is in fact not chords with a melody, it's a melody where you put chords under it. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. It's also a really beautiful way to just add a complete other dimension and a lot of nice sounds to a melody that you're playing. And you can turn it into a great solo performance and do all sorts of stuff with chord melody. In this video, I'm going to go over three things that you have to keep in mind when you're performing and when you're arranging songs for chord melody. So when you take a melody and make your own chord melody arrangement. And we're gonna tap into some of the things that you're gonna find if you listen to people like Ted Green or Joe Pass. My name is Jens Larsen. If you wanna learn jazz and make music, then subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. The first thing you want to do if you've chosen a melody and you want to put some harmony under it and you want to turn it into a chord melody arrangement is to learn to play that melody on the top strings. And this is just really a simple sort of practical way to work with things on the guitar. It's just easier to put a chord under a melody note if it's positioned on the top strings. And that's simply just because then there's more room to add the chord under it. So if I want to harmonize this F with an E flat, then that's just easier if I put it here instead of putting it here, where I get into territory where I might not know the chords. They're different from what I usually play, and they also tend to sound a little bit darker and a little bit more muddy. So if we take a look at the song Body and Soul and then play the first few bars of that melody on the top strings, that could be something like this. And then if I turn that into a chord melody arrangement and add chords under this, that could be something like this. Once you know how to play the melody on the top strings, then for each of the melody notes that you want to put a chord under, then it's really just about playing that note and then figuring out, okay, how am I going to put a chord under this and just look at what is there. So in this case, for the first chord, I'm using this E flat minor 9. I want to play this as a sort of solo guitar arrangement. So that means that I probably want to have the root in there in the chord and that's the lowest note in the voicing. So I'm going to be playing either this low E flat or this slow E flat. And then I have this melody note. So now I have these two if I'm playing the melody here, because I can't reach that one. And then this is about really staying practical. Then it's just about filling in the rest. And there are many ways you can do this. You probably already know a lot of different chord voicings and can explore that. Or maybe what is also a really good practice that I did really a lot is to construct the voicing. So you just look at, well, what do I need to add to these two things to get a complete voicing? So in this case, I have an extension, I have the nine and the root, and then I'm just adding the third and seven, and then I have this one. But of course, when I'm constructing it, I'm ending up with a voicing that I already know because this is a fairly standard E flat minor nine. One thing that's really important not to get trapped in when you're making chord melody arrangements, especially in the beginning, but I think we actually all do this, even if you're more a more seasoned chord melody player, and that is that you have to keep it simple. It's easy to come up with stuff that you can think of, but that you can't really play. And especially, you wanna keep in mind that you're playing a melody. And the most important thing is that the melody comes across. Don't get lost in harmonizing all the notes, keep it simple. And in the beginning, it really makes sense to just start your chord melody arrangements by just harmonizing on the heavy beats when the chords are changing. And that's going to be the one, sometimes the one and the three of each bar. If we take a song with a melody that's moving quite a lot, like Fly Me To The Moon, then that means that you're gonna come up with an arrangement that's something like this. So here I'm just playing the chord on the one of each bar and for the rest I let the melody move and let that keep the natural flow of the piece and that works a lot better. So A minor on beat one, then the melody, down to, F, to the D minor, to G7 and so on and so forth. And this way of just keeping it simple and playable makes the piece play a lot easier and also makes it possible for you to really play it as a piece of music. One thing that is really overlooked when it comes to performing 
and working on count melody is that you also have to work on how it actually sounds. I think we often get completely lost in finding the right chord, uh, where to put the melody and also adding extensions and the voice leading and all those kind of things. And they're not really that important, especially not if you're playing it, because what you really need to focus on is that you get the melody across. So the best thing to do here is actually to record yourself playing the chord melody arrangement and then really listen if you can hear the melody and if you can hear that it is the melody also and really get used to thinking of it as a melody with some added chords also when you're performing it. And one technical thing that's kind of difficult with this is that you have to make sure that you can play the chord so that the melody is louder than the rest. So if we take the body and soul uh, arrangement again, so with this first play the chord and don't play it too loud, really keep that quite so quite soft, you almost don't have to be able to hear it, so... Keep the chords really soft and then let the melody stand out and it's gonna work a lot better. It's gonna be a much nicer experience for the listener because they don't really care about the extensions. They care about the melody and how the whole thing sounds. So if you're playing with your fingers like I am here, then it makes sense to just practice a little bit to go and try and play a chord and then make sure that you can really hear the melody louder than the rest. And that way you're gonna be a lot better equipped to actually perform your chord melody arrangements. And really all it takes is just to sit down and practice and really listen for what you're playing and if the melody is the one note that's really sticking out and the rest just has to sit under it. And of course the same thing goes if you're playing with a pick. Uh, you still need to just practice going. So if you play a chord melody arrangement with a pick, then it should sound like this. These ideas are really important to keep in mind when you're making chord melody arrangements. It's gonna improve both the way that you play and the arrangements that you're making. If you wanna check out a video that I did where I'm going over one of my simpler chord melody arrangements on Autumn Leaves, then check out this video.